Hello and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name is Nehemiah and today I'm really excited to share this knife with you. Today we're looking at the Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. Now I have in the past reviewed the Neutron. Luckily I have one on loan in so we'll be able to compare and contrast exactly what's the same ones and what's different. These knives definitely warrant their own reviews. Uh, doesn't seem so at first glance, but the, the devil's in the details, so buckle up. First thing we'll do is our size comparisons. We've got our Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and our Para 3. The knives are very similar, similarly sized here. The cutting edge is a little bit longer on the Atom, but the overall length is very similar. So uh, that's one thing to note. I will say the thickness on the other hand is very contrasting if we close these knives real quick and you can give it a look here. So it's not quite half as thick, but it's a good, I would say 60, 65% as thick. Uh, the overall handle and probably the, the blade stock. So quite a big difference there. And then the kind of close-up look look between the Neutron and the Atom. So overall, the differences are on the Atom. It's a 3.5 inch uh, blade length to the shoulder. And it's about 3.375 on the cutting edge. Contrasting that with the Neutron, which is a 3 inch blade. And only a 2 and 7 8 inch cutting edge. So this is a pretty substantial length increase. One major thing to note is that the blade stock is actually the same. It's 0.9, uh, which is very thin, which I like. But if we flip the knives over, you're gonna notice a couple differences here. You've got e the deep carry clip as opposed to not. Um, the other difference I'll just point out here before we get into the official review is the the atom in its current configuration with these scales it's not reversible so that's one thing to note i think if you get scales that are rever reversible i think you could fix that problem because they just screw right in but uh it looks like to me it's not reversible as is so we'll do a weigh in real quick here's the atom it's clocking in wow way lighter is that right I'm gonna zero it out, huh? Well, advertised is three ounces. This is way lighter. Well, this should be 2.5. Well, they're both way lighter. Okay, might have to do with the material on here or my scale's broken. I, <laughs> I feel like I need to, uh, no, that's what it's supposed to weigh. Okay, okay. These are a lot lighter than advertised on Blade HQ's website for whatever reason, but I guess that's a good thing. It's better it's much lighter than heavier. Okay, let's get into the dent, the decent, the excellent, the nitpicks, and the terrible. First off in the decent, I like to point out here that this is a knife that is made in the U.S. And as we go through the review, I think that is something that is really, truly astounding. Not because... I'm that patriotic, but just the fact that this knife is going to pull off some things that are really impressive and at a really impressive price. A little bit of a spoiler alert here, but the fact that that is also coming in in a place where we're, we're making it here, that's normally much more expensive to manufacture things here in America. So if you can pull off good value in America, I'm impressed. So that's... Less of a patriotic thing. I do, I guess, live here, and I, I, I like America. Uh, but I'm not, like, crazy, like, focused on it. Uh, but if we can make it here and make it good and make it at a reasonable price, I'm all, I'm all for it. The overall carrying experience with this knife is fantastic. You don't have a flipper tab hanging off. It's a very slim, narrow knife. It actually carries kind of the same as the the neutron the clip is deep carry and this isn't aftermarket this is just stock it's deep carry and so when you look at you know where this knife would actually be you know sitting this this actually kind of pokes out of your pocket a little bit more than the atom uh and it's not really that much thicker you know it's pretty much the same as far as how much like pocket space very very similar i mean you can pretty much hide right behind there so 
Uh, carrying this knife is a dream, which is really saying something considering it's a 3.5 inch blade. I mean, this is the same blade length as like the the uh, Koenig Arius, which is a gigantic knife that weighs like twice as much and is way, way thick. One thing I really like about it is the scales. Now, this is just bone micarta, but there's several different colors that they have. There's G10 versions, there's CF coming. Uh, I think there's even, I think rumors of like a titanium one that they're trying to do, like a milled pattern titanium one, which looks really amazing. So as far as like satisfying your custom bug, um, or you just get you know bored with a color configuration, you could just slap something else on these. Uh, so that support and just how easy, quick and easy, it's just these two screws comes right off, put it right back on. You don't have to unscrew this pivot to get the scale off, which is great. Uh, that's awesome. So I like the variety and the ease of, of executing that. One other thing, and that's just a subtle detail, but I really like the logo. The logo is actually like carved into it, which is kind of ni nice. This is three rivers. So those are representing the three rivers kind of converging. Um, you know, you, you don't have anything other than this written on the blade. That's just like a really cool logo that it doesn't have to say Three Rivers Manufacturing somewhere for you know it to, to tell you where it's from and um, make it look good uh, without being too loud. I think that's a good thing to call out. Another thing that's impressed me, and you'll see uh, why here in a little bit, but just the construction of this feels really solid. For such a thin knife, sometimes you can be a little worried of just it being a little flimsy, but this, it just, everything about it is really well done quality wise just it goes together rock solid um something that you know i get the same impression of on like a pm2 it's just rock solid so to pull that off in such a slim package is something just notable something i'm not normally going to comment on on a knife but here it definitely deserves it the fit and finish on the knife is pretty solid i would say the one minor thing is just the inconsistencies on the Marcarta, which is kind of, you know, comes with the territory. I did buy two of these. I was lucky enough uh, in the drop on Blade HQ. And this one just has a lot rougher finishing. Like, you would think this is all just wear and tear, but it's not. It, it, it's just this scale is completely different kind of finish on the edge compared to the other one. Not a big deal. I mean, Marcarta is kind of meant to look a little bit aged and... You know, patina a little bit so i'm not concerned but there is a little bit of cons inconsistencies on the finish i overall that's a minor nitpick everything else is pretty spectacular on the fit and finish it's centered uh everything fit together really easily and smoothly when i put it back together disassembly this is another po point of um positive thing here the effort to take this sucker apart is so much smaller than on the neutrons. The neutrons, you go, you know, six hex pick, I think, this is an eight, take take everything off, and then you had Phillips stuff underneath. It, it was crazy, it was nuts. You had to like take three different screws out just to get into the thing. This one, you can do everything with just two. You have uh, the six Torx here, and then you have the three barrel spacers underneath. Those are also Torx now instead of the Phillips and then the eight. So really quick to take apart. Um, you do have three barrel spacers, more on that later, but overall this is much better than uh, the disassembly uh, experience on the Neutron. Last thing in the decent we'll go over here is the OCD. The OCD is the open, the close, and the disengage, kind of where I zoom in on the action of the knife. This is something that you know is really important to some people and really not important to a lot of other people. Here, yeah, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> so on the open, you have the thumb studs. I think the traditional way that you can do over and over and over, and it's not gonna be an issue for you, is just use the thumb de deployment. The detent is snappy enough that for a thumb, I think the action is pretty stellar. You know, thumb action kind of has a, a lower ceiling, if you will, in, in most knives. It's just such an awkward movement compared to, you know, a flipping or a flicking uh, that you would normally have with different opening apertures or opening me mechanisms. Uh, but it's perfectly serviceable. And as you can see, I'm getting it to fully deploy every single time. It's not an issue. It fires out really reliably. Now, 
I'm always going to try to spidey flick something. And here, it's kind of good news, bad news. Uh, the distance between the thumb stud and the micarta, they're basically touching. So to get in there, you got to get it right in the right spot. Y you can do it. It's going to hurt. Every time I do it, I get a little owie right there. <laughs> and if I do it over and over and over, I just, it, it starts to smart so much that I just stop doing it. So in a pinch, you know, if I'm carrying the knife for a day, take it out once. If I want to fire it open that way, I'm, I'm going to do it. It's not a big deal. If I'm sitting on the couch and just like fidgeting with the knife, I'm probably going to go to the defaulted thumb deployment just because that's not going to hurt my thumb as much. So the action is really good, it's just painful. What I would really like, and if anybody can find this or make this, message me, I want to remove this thumb stud with like a little spoon type that you know would maybe cup my thumb, like right here, so I can actually fit it in and then flick it out. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be really, really cool. It would be cool on this side too, but just not as necessary. Um, so for that reason, the open isn't excellent, but still decent. The disengage, I would put in the excellent. You actually have an improved disengagement compared to the Neutron. The Neutron did a good job. You have some chamfering kind of angling going on here. It gives you pretty decent access to the lock bar, but it's still a little bit kind of thin and uh, finicky. Just a tiny bit, you know, It your, your thumb isn't getting all the way down that much. But here, as you can see, they made that gap much larger. And so you can come in with like really the meat of your thumb and disengage that without having to be just hanging onto the jimps at the top, but actually push from the side with lots of leverage because your thumb can get all the way down and in there. This is decent. This is excellent. So that's a huge improvement on the disengaging. Disengage I can do it all day, every day. Not gonna, not gonna complain about it. Surprisingly, on the the close. Now this is after I tuned it. It was pretty good out of the box, mind you, but I it got maybe twenty percent better after I cleaned it and oiled it, and it's one jostle. It's really clean and smooth. I mean, this is the action that I think beats the Spidey Chef in just the first week of having it. You know, the Spidey Chef has gotten better with age, but it's still, to this day, is not as good as this. I was able to tune it to where it fires out, it closes pretty smoothly, and there's zero blade pe blade play, um, and still maintain this really quick and easy, you know, drop shot. It's not guillotine, right? I have to jostle it, either really tiny ones or just one good one, and it'll close up perfectly. Uh, so overall, that's a very decent bordering on excellent. If you change this to where I could spidey flick it and it not hurt, it would be excellent overall. So I think for people that don't care about that, you should be very much encouraged. All right, let's move into the excellent. The excellence I am going to talk about is the value. And here it, it, we're going to kind of talk about more aspects of the knife that kind of tie this thing together. But this steel type. The steel type is 20 CV. This is M390, 204P, excellent, excellent, premium, premium steel. This knife is $200. A full mid-size knife that's also highly EDCable with a premium steel for $200. This is amazing. But, and, and to add in on the fact that this is all made in America, I'm astounded. So from a value proposition, the steel type, and just everything that this knife brings to the, to the table, wow. I mean, really, wow. Next, the cutting ability of this knife. This really super thin blade stock, very high, high grind, very thin behind the edge. This is a laser beam. I mean, look at the tip on this sucker. It just, ah. Uh, and the distal taper starts about here. So you're getting pretty even, you know, consistent cuts all the way through. Uh, this cuts better than the Herman because of the uh, because of that. It's just a more consistent cut, I think. The Herman, it, it distal tapers like pretty much right away. So as you're going along the knife, it's just not the same cut. It cuts well, but I think this just barely tops it. This is tied. 
I'm going to say for now. I, I might update you in the future if I change my mind, but this might be tied with the, the Spidey Chef in terms of just overall cutting performance. Next excellent thing is the ergonomics. And here I'm happy to report things have gotten much better. Now, you know, I had the, the ergos on the Neutron and the Decent before, and, you know, there's just a few nitpicks. One, you have kind of this nice big opening sharpening choil right here. But the there's this little ledge right here. And so you could put your finger there, but it was kind of like, ah, it feels like they didn't mean for me to put my finger there. So when you come back here, it was okay, but the knife was so thin, the pocket clip was so thin, it didn't really feel fill the hand, for one, and it felt a little bit awkward to choke up. And so here on the Atom, they have completely fixed this issue. You see this little notch right here, this attention to detail that you can see, they realized that was an issue and accommodated it. So now you can snuggle up right there and it's just thick enough, just wide enough to where it completely feels like it's supposed to be there. You have kind of your, your middle finger gets to be right back here where the, the index finger normally goes on the further gri back grip. And so, yeah, you can totally live right here and you feel very connected to the knife. If you want to back up, that larger kind of opening spot to get into the lock bar access kind of locks you in. So if you need to be further away for whatever reason, it is extremely comfortable, much more so than the, the Neutron. The clip is much thicker here, and I think there's 100% the right choice. Number one, it's deep carry instead of, you know, the not deep carry. But more importantly, it really fills the hand right in the palm swell, palm swell area where you want that to happen. So it just feels so much more comfortable in the hand. Really, really makes a world of difference. Just that small little thickness change, and you're you're good. You're you're off to the races. So one last thing on the on the ergonomics here. You see the liners here are actually exposed, and this is fine. Like it's not bad by any means, but just the finish and the comfort of having the micarta wrap all the way around. The sharp edges aren't near as sharp. You know, the micarta was a lot better than like the G10 on the sharpness factor, but this isn't really an issue because they can round it and go all the way around the knife. So you're getting that same consistent feel on the top all the way back and the bottom. And it just is one consistent feel. Instead of this, you can kind of feel the cold metal underneath you and it's just harder, obviously. So overall, that difference, I think it's subtle, but aesthetically, I think it makes the knife look a lot better. But more importantly, it makes the ergonomics even better. So yeah, wow. Okay, let's get into the nitpicks. First nitpick is just the fact that there's these three barrel spacers. Um, I don't know, like they're fine. They're totally fine. Maybe two instead of three would be okay. You know, putting putting them together, you just got to get them placed in there and then put the screw in. It, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's not super difficult. It's definitely easier than, like, taking it apart and putting the, the Herman back together, for sure. Uh, you don't have washers in between and that you got to chase around. Uh, but, you know, I don't know, just maybe slightly bigger ones and just two wouldn't be too bad. Or if they locked in place or had, like, a little divot to go into so they don't slide around so much, uh, that might be handy. Uh, what else? Nitpicks. Um... The G10, like I mentioned, could be sharp on some models. I don't think it's going to be a problem here because you can curve it around. I would be a little bit worried about the sharp edges on the inside here of the G10. That is 100% speculation, so kind of take that with a grain of salt. I haven't had a chance to actually handle one of the G10 models. So this might just be a red herring of a nitpick. Every single nitpick that I used to have on the Neutron is no longer here. They have taken care of all the problems. The kind of awkward finger choil, the lock bar access, the clip, uh, the size of it, uh, the liners, like everything that I had a problem. And, and mind you, I really liked the Neutron. It's not like this was an epic fail and this is just passable. This was already really, really, really good still. And this is even better. So... As far as the size of the knife, I don't know. That's totally up to you of whether this is a better size or not. I'm in the camp of 3.5 to 3.3 is like the perfect size. So for me, the fact that this is super slim, like a very small knife, but does bigger, better, more dynamic cuts like a bigger knife, 
all in the same package. I think this might be probably one of the most versatile knives I've come across and at a really good price point. So yes, positives, excellent. I'm still talking about the problem. I'm supposed to be nitpicking the knife. <laughs> uh, so just three bar barrel spacers and maybe that's it. Oh, the minor detail with the inconsistent mic card. I mean, th these are, I'm, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel here, guys. I don't know. Uh, for the terrible, I have one potential terrible thing. It was definitely terrible before. I think it might be getting better now. And that's the availability on the knives. This was coming up on Blade HQ, I think, has a bunch. They have red ones coming out. They have carbon fiber, I think, are coming out. Maybe a gray micarta or a gray G10, I think it is. There's some coming up. So if you're excited about this knife, I don't think all hope is lost of getting one because they're so in high demand. But if you go to Blade HQ and you just every day check it, they're going to give you a time. So a few days ago, they said, okay, this one's coming up at 9 o'clock on whatever day it was, and I was able to, to get it right at that time. It sold out in about one and a half minutes from what I could tell. So you really got to be honest. Is it worth it? Absolutely. If you can get one of these suckers, do it. It's such a good value, such a good knife. I'm really genuinely impressed. Let's talk about the conclusion. Here, you know, it's August. I think this is now the front runner for the knife of the year. Um, we're going to have an award show at the end and, you know, maybe something crazy will come out and I need to spend extra time with this and make sure that there isn't something that I haven't figured out, creep up. So far, that hasn't happened on knives uh, that I've reviewed. Usually I'm pretty thorough, but this is amazing. This is really, really good. Uh, non, non free spinning pivot. It locks in place. Like there's a lot of good stuff that I didn't go over that is just really, really appreciated. And, you know, if you like a good thin EDC knife, that's still, you know, a, a good size lengthwise, you know, this isn't really a beater knife. This isn't your Spyderco Shaman. So if you're looking to bang on a knife or something like that, it, it might not be for you. It is big enough and robust enough that I think it can kind of hold its own in those situations, depending on what you're doing. The 20 CV is going to be incredibly resistant to corrosion resistance. The cutting edge is going to be awesome. The toughness is great. I, I'm, I'm kind of struggling to see what the weakness of this knife is, really, that would stop anybody from wanting to get it. Um, thumb studs, maybe, you know, if you're, like, addicted to spider flicking and you don't like the pain that that causes... I, I don't, you know, <laughs> disagree with you on that one, but I think the action is still good enough for a washer knife that, uh, I mean, this is already, if, if we're just looking at washer knives, this might be the best action of a washer knife I've ever experienced, with the one exception of the Jason Guthrie Scout, which is legendary, and that's like a $700 knife. So you're getting, you're getting a lot. I, I think if I you know, had a store where these were just plentiful and there wasn't like a mad rush to get them, but the store had them selling for $400, I would probably still buy it. That's how good it is. Uh, if you had not already figured out, this is a really good knife. I like it a lot. Uh, it's, it's definitely going to be in my permanent collection. That was one of the knives I'm just never going to sell. This is awesome. I hope it was helpful to you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.